last week we started a new series about the Sermon on the Mount. And so we talked about the Beatitudes, the first several verses, the blessed are the meek, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the pure in heart. And, uh, and that's what we talked about this week. We're moving on, uh, though, in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. And if you're taking notes, you can write this down. That you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. The salt of the earth and the light of the world. And um, it's kind of a, an interesting word uh, choice that Jesus used here. But the interesting thing, if we think about both salt and light, if we think about both of them and what they have in common, one of the things they have in common is this. Both salt and light influence their surroundings, don't they? Uh, if, if you have a, a bland piece of steak and, and you put some salt on it, then that salt influences it. You know, you eat that steak and you're not thinking, wow, this just tastes like salt. If it is, then you had too much on there, right? You say, oh, it, it, it influenced the surroundings. And here we have light. We turn the light on. It influences the surroundings. So the words of Christ in Matthew chapter uh, verse 13, it says, it says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled under as worthless. Now, now salt doesn't technically lose its flavor, uh, its flavor. But, but back in those days, most of the salt that they got was from the Dead Sea. And, and when they would take the salt, they would evaporate the water out of it, and there would be other minerals in it as well, like gypsum and, and such things as that. And, and what would happen is sometimes the people transporting salt would have it in these bags, and it would be you know rained on and, and the rain would soak through these bags and all the real pure salt would soak out of it and all that would be left would be this this residue in the bag. What good is that residue? Can you make it salty again? No, absolutely not. It's a rhetorical question. It says, can you make it salty again? It'll be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Man, salt was such an important thing in this day and age. In fact, it's still a very important thing, but probably even more so then. We've all heard of the Roman roads, right? All roads lead to Rome, all these roads. You know what a lot of those roads were made for? A lot of those roads were built for the transportation of salt into the city of Rome because they had such great resources of salt is what made Rome such a wealthy world power. In fact, the word salary comes from the Latin word salarium, which really meant, uh, it, it referred to being paid in salt. The, the, the Roman soldiers were often paid in salt, or they were paid the amount so they could use it to purchase their own salt. And that's where we get the expression, you hear somebody say, oh, they're just not worth their salt. Right? It means they're not worth their pay. They're not worth what they're getting paid. So that's what this word salt means. So what does salt do? Man, salt does, uh, does a lot of things. But one thing that, that salt does is, uh, is if you have something salty, it creates thirst. Salt creates thirst. Thirst. You ever heard the old saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, right? Well, you can't make a horse drink, but you know what you can do? You can put salt in the oats. And what's that going to do? It's going to inspire that horse to want to drink. You know, when, when us as followers of Christ, we living this life as, as salt... That means that we're creating thirst for God. People look at you and say, I want what you have. There's something different about you. There's something, it seems like you have something that I don't have and, and I want that. You know, your job is not to make them drink, just like your job is not to make the horse drink, but your job is to make people thirsty for Christ. Thirsty for Christ. Man, salt has so many 
so many benefits. Have you ever had something um, without salt before? Like, I bought, uh, oh, here we go. I bought these pretzels. No salt pretzels. Who buys these? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only people that buy them is people that have to buy them, right? Like the doctor said, no more salt for you. And, and you eat them because you just want to, like, have a pretzel. But, man, you ever have no salt pretzels? Yeah. If you want to try them, I got some else there afterwards. You can grab some no salt pretzels. But you know what else I have? Mmm. The ones with salt. That is so much better. And of course, like I said, it causes thirst. Pardon me. So much better with salt on it. Man, I love pretzels, but not without salt. Salt, it, it, it enhances the flavor of things. It creates this thirst. The next thing that salt does is that it melts. It melts things. Have, have you noticed that here in, in New England, in the winter time, we get ice on our walkway, we get ice on our roadways, and what do we do? We go and dump salt on them because the salt melts the ice. And us as followers of Christ, he says, you are the salt of the earth, and, and it's our responsibility, it's part of our task to, to melt the hard hearts of those people that are around us to melt their hearts, to help them to uh, not have the, the, the cold hearts towards God that they once had. Another thing that salt does is it preserves things. Salt preserves. You know, down south, that, that's where I was born. That's where we go, where a lot of my family is. We have something called country ham. You guys ever have country ham? Some of you guys know what it is. For, for you New Englanders... Uh, prosciutto, prosciutto, you know, that, that's like the Italian version of country ham. It's the same thing. It's salt cured ham. Man, you can't eat too much of it but because it's salty. But what does that salt do? It preserves it. And that's one of the reasons why salt was so important in these days was because they didn't have modern refrigeration. And if they wanted to, to, to preserve meats, they couldn't put it in the refrigerator, but they could pack it in salt. It preserves and that's part of our role as followers of Christ, to preserve the lives of our friends and our family. That, that we would influence them in such a way that it would preserve their soul. Another thing that it does is, is, is salt heals. Yeah, you ever notice that? You know, the, if you have a, uh, have a cut or a wound, you go swimming in the ocean, along the, he the healing process. Some of you have maybe been, been hurt by, by religion or, or by other people. And, and when someone that's a true follower of Christ comes along and they're living this life of being the salt of the earth, it helps to heal that. See, the thing with salt is that, that it's a very silent witness. It's a silent thing that we do, that we're living our lives in such a way that is influencing those that are around us. You know, salt is, is a great thing, but imagine having a nice steak, and you take some salt, and you just pour it all in the middle of the steak, right? How's that going to be? You know, not, not so good. Sometimes too much of a good thing is not a good thing anymore. And sometimes I think that's what happens when followers of Christ, they only just get together and only hang out with people that are just like themselves, right? Sometimes we start to turn other people's mouths a little bit. And, and what, what salt, the purpose of it is that it can, you know, enhance flavor, it can do all these things, but it needs to spread out a little bit. It needs to influence the world around us. It means that we're influencing people for Christ, that we're a silent witness, perhaps, for Jesus Christ. Salt changes things. Salt cha a little bit of salt can flavor a big pot of beans or, or whatever it is that you're cooking or making. So we are the salt of the earth. You know, so often... Followers of Christ, you know what they want to do? They want to protect themselves from the world. I want to protect myself from the world. And, and, and when, when I think about the life of Christ, Christ, he was always in the places where the religious people thought that he shouldn't be. 
He was always hanging around people that nobody liked. He, he was always hanging around sinners. He was always hanging around people that were far from God. And, and us as followers of Christ, sometimes we're like, well, we just can't associate with people like that. We just can't be around people like that. Oh, man, you don't love God. Well, I can't be your friend anymore. You think I'm joking? You wouldn't, you'd you be amazed how many times I've heard people say, well, I just had to break off this friendship because they didn't follow God. Now, now, granted, if they're dragging you down, if they're dragging you away from Christ, then yeah, maybe it is time that you put into that. But how can we influence the world? How can we be the salt of the earth if we're not around them? Because if we separate our lives too much, then what influence will we have? Salt that sits in a container like this up on the shelf ha has no use at all, does it? It doesn't do anything. It just sits there. Sometimes that's what, what people like to do, what followers of Christ like to do. They want to come to church. They want to have a, have a group, but they don't want to socialize with anybody outside of the world. Like, well, what do, what do they think? You know, oh, my, my friend invited me to, 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 you know, go to the bar with him and, and to hang out because he wants to, to know more about Christ. But I just, I just don't want to be seen with him. What do people think? Yeah, what do people think if you actually acted like Christ for once? And sometimes we're just afraid to do that. We aren't salt if we don't mingle with people that are far from Christ. If we're not kind to other people, if we're not peacemakers, if, if we're not merciful, if we're not pure in heart, then we aren't being the salt of the earth. So I wonder, have you, if you're a follower of Christ, have you lost your saltiness? Have you lost your, your saltiness? Have you lost your flavor? Or are you flavorful? Are you influencing the world around you. If we lose our flavor, Scripture says, Jesus says, that the only purpose then is to be thrown out into the streets and trampled. He goes on. He says, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop cannot be hidden. Why does the world need the light? Why does the world need the light? Why, why are we the light of the world? The world needs the light, write this down, because it is dark. Simple. The world needs the light because it's dark. We're surrounded by darkness. You just turn on your television and you'll see all the darkness that we're surrounded by. But, but here's the thing. Sometimes followers of Christ, they want to run from the darkness. But no, no, he's not saying don't, he's saying don't run from the darkness. Shine into it. Shine into it. You got a battle between the darkness and the light. Who's going to win? It says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Not you will be one day. You are. You are. Some people say, well, I just need to learn more of the Bible before I can start sharing my faith and doing this and that. When, when, does, when does the light start shining? The moment it was lit, right? Here, you know what? Can we shut the lights off for a second? Hopefully nobody's afraid of the dark. If you are, I, I apologize. Can you all see that? Everyone can see it. When, when did this light start shining? As soon as it was lit, the, the very moment that I lit it, it started shining brightly. But yet sometimes, us as followers of Christ say, well, I just need to learn more. I just need to know more. I just need to do more before I can shine brightly for Christ. You say, no, once your light has been lit, you can begin to shine brightly for me. Okay, we can turn the lights back on. So it says, you are the light of the world. What, what does light do? What does light do? I mean, light does a lot of things, but the most basic, simplest thing light does is light shines. Light shines. We are to dispel the darkness. We shut off all the lights in here, and as dark as this room may get, that darkness cannot overwhelm that light. There's nothing that the darkness can do to combat that one little light right there. That light will always win. And us as followers of Christ, we are not to run from the darkness, but to shine into it. 
We are the light of the world. Man, light has power, doesn't it? Light, light, in fact, my back can prove it to you, okay? We were on vacation, and, and I put a lot of sunscreen on, but let me tell you, it didn't do the job. So, so I have a red back that, that, that can prove that there is power in light. It, it shines into the darkness. What else does uh, light do? Light purifies. Purifies those ultraviolet rays. In fact, I have a, at home I have a little uh, a water purification thing, and all it is is a, is a light. And you put the light in the water, you stir it around, and the water's good to drink. Because light can purify. Is your influence in your friends and your family, is it a purifying influence? Is it one that's helping to bring uh, purification, helping to, to draw people closer to God, or is it pushing them further away? Light also brings growth. Light brings growth. I mean, we have any gardeners here? Anybody have a garden? Okay, a bunch of you guys. Man, what, what good is a garden without light? Light brings growth. And, and it's amazing how this, this ball of light that we have millions and millions of miles away can, can bring growth to our plants here on earth. But that's what light does. Another thing that, that light does is it warms things. Right? Light warms things. In fact, I got a flashlight here. Very bright flashlight. This, this flashlight is, uh, is amazing. I'll show you how amazing it is. Because light can warm things. Watch, watch how hot this light gets here, okay? Before I burn the place down. <laughs> Light warms. That's a bright light. Anybody want to come and stare in this for a few minutes? Um, no, I don't think that'd be a wise thing. Light warms things, and, and our influence into the world around us should be one that's warm, one that's loving, one that's drawing people. Man, is our influence one that's warm or is it cold? Are we are we drawing people closer to us and closer to God, or pushing them further away? Every Christian, everyone that calls himself a follower of Jesus Christ is a light, is a light like this, helping people to find salvation, helping people to come into that relationship with God. But you know something? You're not able to, to shine this light on your own. You're not able to, to shine this, this light simply on your own. You know, we, it's more like the more like the moon. Does the moon have any light giving abilities of its own? No, it's simply a reflection of the sun. And that's what we should be. We should be reflecting the sun. Hey, there was a a story I once heard about this Sunday school teacher and he asked the kids said, "Can anybody tell me what a saint is?" Now, the only saints that this young child had seen before was in the stained glass windows in the church. So he had seen those, and he says, well, a saint must be a person that the light shines through. And man, he, he said it in a very naive way, but how much truth is in that? Someone that the light shines through. See, the Holy Spirit not only wants to live in us, but He wants to shine through us. We need to be influencing the world that we live in. Are you a thermometer or are you a thermostat? A thermometer just simply says, oh, everything is really hot in here, everything is really cold in here, but does absolutely nothing to change it. Whereas a thermostat changes the temperature. Or another way of looking at the light is what are you filled with? This lantern wouldn't shine very long if it wasn't filled with something. If it wasn't filled with oil, what is your life filled with? Is your life filled with the Holy Spirit? Is your life filled with God's Word? Then he goes on in verse 15. He says, No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, the lamp is placed on a stand. 
No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, it's placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. We need to place our light on a stand. We need to place our light so everyone can see it. Sometimes we try to hide it. Sometimes we try to, to cover it up. Oh, we don't want anybody to see our light. We don't, want to, we don't want to draw any attention to ourselves. Like, oh yeah, I follow God, but I just don't want anybody to know. He says, don't cover it up. What is our light? He goes on to say here, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see. Let our good deeds, let the things that we do, the way that we treat other people, the way that we, we, we care for them, the way that we love them, let it shine out for all to see. You know, today, uh, many people are taking this step of, of baptism, letting their light shine, saying, so yeah, I made a commitment to Christ, but, but, but today I'm going to do it publicly. Today I'm going to do it with an audience. Today I'm going to do it so people know, yes, I've made a stand. I've taken a stand. I've made a choice to follow Jesus. I'm going to let my light shine for Him. There was two guys um, in the New Testament that were a really good example of salt and light. Paul and Silas. And, and they were out preaching and, and healing people. And the whole city began to revolt against them. And, and they were arrested. Paul and Silas, Silas were arrested. And then they were beaten. Now, I don't know if you've ever gotten beaten like these guys were, but, but they, there's debate whether they were beaten with rods or whether they were beaten with whips. You know, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know if there's like a pro or a con to one or the other. You know, it's like, you want to get beat with a baseball bat or with a whip that has bits of bone and glass in it? Like, I don't know. But regardless, they were, they've been beaten brutally. And then... They were turned over to the jailer and said, make sure they don't get out of here. So the jailer brought them in to the innermost cell. This was the one that would, would hold the, the hardened criminals. This was the one that would hold the people that they did not want to get out. And then it said that they, they put their feet in stocks. Now stocks was basically like if you have a board there and it's got these, like, you know, Grooves cut into the board, you put your feet in it, and they put another one on top and they bolt it down. So they're actually sitting down with their feet up, okay, and they stop. After they've been beaten, they're in a dungeon. I mean, let's see, if, if, if the Bible said that they complained, I think we would all say, you know what, that's justifiable. I think we would all be complaining in that situation. I wouldn't judge them one bit if they were complaining here. And here they are. They're sitting here in this horrible situation. And listen to what it says in Acts 16.25. It says, around midnight, so they're still up, midnight, it's dark in there, probably don't even have any light. Paul and Silas were doing what? They're praying and singing hymns to God. Like, kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. You know, they're having like a good old time now. They're singing, they're praying. And it says, and all the other prisoners were listening. Now, I don't think, I could be wrong, but I'm probably not. I don't think that Paul and Silas were like, you know what? We're in this horrible place. What can we do now to really let our light shine? What can we do to really impact the people around us? No, this was something that just naturally came out from them. Just like the light. The light isn't working hard to shine. Once it's been lit, it's illuminating for the whole world to see. And they're there, they're in this horrible situation. They say, you know what? let's just start praising God. Let's start thanking Him for the good things He has done. They start praying, they start singing, and suddenly there was a massive earthquake. And the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately fell, flew open. And the chains of every prisoner fell off. It's like we're singing and God starts tapping his foot. And this earthquake comes and it just destroys the place. All their chains fall off. Verse 27. Then the jailer woke up. <laughs> what are you doing, Mr. Jailer? Sleeping on the job. 
This was not something that was supposed to be happening. He was supposed to be standing guard. But here's the jailer sleeping. He wakes up and he sees the prison doors are wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. He drew his sword to kill himself. Why? Because he knew if these prisoners escaped, he was going to be publicly executed. And he's like, I might as well just do it myself. I might as well just get the job done here. I was sleeping on the job, and the prisoners escaped. I'm done. Many of us probably would have been like, you know what? I'm out of here. Go for it. See a jailer. God let us out. See ya. Don't want to be ya. We're out of here, right? We're out. But, but listen to what Paul said. Paul shouted to him, stop! Don't kill yourself. We're all here. We're all just having a little party in here. We're all just singing and dancing and enjoying the earthquake. Isn't it great? And, man, he cared about them. He said, well, I would have just been out of there. You know, a lot of times, many Christians, they do that. We see darkness and we're like, oh, I'm out of there. I'm out of there. Oh, I, I can't even, I can't go there because it's, it's too much darkness. Well, if it's dark there and you're there too, then maybe you're not shining your light bright enough. So oh, I, I just I heard some some secular music or or I saw someone you know sitting in a in a bar drinking or or I saw someone that had a tattoo or I saw someone with spiked hair and it was just too much darkness for me. It's like come on, and they run. No, no, no. Darkness isn't something that we run from. When you're light, you shine into it. You shine into it. So these guys, they stuck around. They could have wanted this jailer to be harmed. I mean, after all, he's the one that chained him in there. He's the one that was watching over them. He's, I mean, they're in these stocks. That was a form of torture. He's the one that's making their lives miserable. They could have wanted out of there. But instead, they said, hey, hey, don't hurt yourself. We're still here. So what did they do? And they showed love for this guy. They showed love for him. Because oh, I just don't know enough Bible to shine. I just, I just haven't been a, a, a follower of Christ for long enough to really let light shine. The thing that I've found out as a people, they're more interested in how much you care about them than how much you know. They're more interested in, in how you, you treat them than how much you know. In fact, John 13.35, Jesus said this, and man, if everyone that calls himself a follower of Christ would apply this verse, the world would be a better place. He says, for your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. Not how much you know, not how much scripture you memorize, not how much you pray. Your love for one another is what will prove that you're my disciple. There's an old song we might have saying as a kid, you guys know it? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. No, okay, a couple of you guys were paying attention in uh, children's church as kids or in vacation Bible school. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. No. Okay, you guys are catching on. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan. Some people say blow. I always go, you know, just, I don't know, I liked it better that way. But some of you guys pay, so don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine, don't let Satan. See, you know, he's trying to blow it out. Did you know that? There's two reasons this little song teaches us that our light, why our light might not be shining. Your light might not be shining because you're hiding it or because it was blown out. You say, well, my light's just not shining. Well, why not? Is it, is it not shining because you're hiding it or is it not shining because, because the devil blew it out? Because people around you and their influence blew it out. Yeah, you should run from darkness if your light's not shining. Absolutely. This little light of mine. Simple song, but, but don't let Satan blow out your light. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Paul and Silas, they didn't hide their light under a bushel. They let it shine brightly. This earthquake came. They said to the jailer, don't kill yourself. 
yourself, man. We're still all here. We're just shining our light. We're just singing. We're just having a good time. Doing the jailhouse rock or whatever. I don't know. Verse 29. The jailer called for lights. Let's, let's light up the place so we can see what's going on. Called for lights and he ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Man, that escalated quickly, didn't it? I mean, it went from he's ready to fall on his sword to saying, what do I have to do to be saved? You guys have something I don't have. You're, you're salty. You have light. Man, you're creating a thirst in me for something that, that I've never seen before. What do I need to do to be saved? And they replied, simply believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. We make it too difficult, don't we, sometimes? We make it too, oh, what do you got to do to be saved? Well, you got to do this and you got to do that. You know, act this way and don't act that way. And listen to this, don't act, listen to that. Oh, yeah, we got to do all this stuff. He says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved along with everyone in your household. Paul and Silas were living as salt and light. And when you're living as salt and light, it changes lives. It changes lives. When you're letting your light shine, when, when you're being salt to the world around you, you're influencing people, it changes lives. People see, say, I want what you have. What do I need to do to get what you have? You just, you just seem like, like even though you're in this horrible time, even though you're suffering loss, even though you're in tragedy, even though you're having a difficulty at school, even though you're having a hard time at work, even though you're having a hard time in your relationships, and everybody looks at you and says, what's, what's going on? Something's different about you because you're responding differently. You're responding differently. Even when all this darkness is around, somehow, and I don't quite understand, but somehow, there's still a light on. There's still light that's shining. There's still flavor. What's going on? I want that. How could you go through that situation and still have hope for the future? How could you still go through that situation and be praising God? Paul, Silas, how could you be beaten, thrown in a dungeon, in stocks, in a dungeon floor, and how could you still be praising God even then? There's something different about you. Because you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And if you are a Christ-empowered influencer, your life will make a difference. When we have the Holy Spirit fueling our life, you can't help but to make a difference. Man, because what does the light do? What does the light do? It attracts you know, you go out in the, in the you know, nighttime, it's dark out, all the bugs turn on the light, and all the bugs come. They're attracted to it. People are attracted to the light. I was talking to, to Matt a few minutes ago. He said, that is big bonfire. And people would come, came from all around to see the bonfire because you can't ignore a fire. You can't ignore the light. You're going out, you see the big searchlight scanning the sky, like, oh, what's going on over there? I can't ignore the light. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy to us. And we ask you to help us to, to live as salt and to live as light. Help us to live in a way that influences the world around us, that flavors, that warms hearts, that attracts people, that brings growth and brings life preserves people's soul from separation from you. Help us to be that salt and light. If our light is out, we ask to, to show us how we've covered it over maybe and, and help us to, to take that basket off of the light and put that light on the stand so everyone can see. And if the devil is blown out our light, Lord, we ask you to reignite that fire in us now so that we can shine brightly for you and for your kingdom. Some of you here maybe never made even a commitment to Christ. You've never crossed that line. But something drew you here today. Maybe it was an influence of a friend or a family member. Maybe somebody bribed you to come. I don't know. But as you're here, you feel that tug 
that draw of the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit saying, come, come to me. I want to have a relationship with you. As Paul told the jailer, all that you need to do to be saved, to have that new life, is say, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I believe that He is my Lord. And I turn from my past, and I'm going to follow you. Lord, let us follow you. Let people see our good works and praise you, our Father in heaven. Let us shine brightly. In Jesus' name, amen.